market structure is definitely one of the most basic things you should understand. And you already heard about my opinion on indicators. Okay. So again, we talked about indicators in the uh, first video, in my opinion on them. In my opinion, okay, you should be starting, not financial advice, obviously, you should be starting with market trend. Okay, it has nothing to do with indicators. Indicators are lagging and they obviously tell you the trend of the market after it happens. But I'm talking about naked price action. Okay, higher highs, higher lows, lower highs and lower lows. Now, if I go to a line chart, it's very, very easy to see the trend of the market. Obviously, right now, this is a very major downtrend, right? How, like what technically, like what technically makes this a downtrend though? Okay. Not the fact that we're just going down. You have to pay attention to the little details that tell us the trend, such as these higher highs or these lower highs and these lower lows. So the this is like the actual thing telling us we're in a downtrend. Every single higher peak we're getting is lower than the other peak. So here's a peak. This peak's lower. This peak's lower. So on a line chart, it's very easy to see that. Okay. An example of a downtrend would be something like this let me draw a path real quick and the, the issue i have with a lot of people who teach this um i always say oh this is a downtrend you're never gonna see a downtrend look like this i'm not gonna lie you're gonna see a downtrend look like let me show you you're you're more gonna see a downtrend look like this so see how it gets really complicated like and you're probably wondering you're like well there's a if this is a how is this not an uptrend because there's a high lower or higher low and then a higher high. It's because the higher time frame, like when this combines into one single candle, okay, it, it generally goes like this. So see how am I like combining these little spikes together? See how they're really obvious? So this is fully a downtrend. Now an uptrend would be the opposite. Okay, so an uptrend would be something like um let me just draw a really quick pathway. An uptrend would be something like this. Okay, and again, it's not going to look perfect like that. Okay, it's going to look more like it's going to look more like that first thing I showed you. It's going to be like like that might be an uptrend. Okay, but the important thing to note is the most obvious lows and most obvious highs getting created are all higher than each other. So this is a high, this is a higher low. Like what's obvious? Like I would consider this. I would consider this obvious. All right, these little internal, these are called internal lows, okay, because they're inside the range. And um, I like to use this word a lot internal and external. Like an external high would be something like this, and an internal would be inside the range, such as here, here, like these lows and highs, these lows and highs. Um, I really like to use that term, and it's going to become handy in the future. But just know that a perfect uptrend is not always going to look perfect like this. It's going to have a lot of like this kind of price action. So let's practice some identifying some trends. So obviously right here, this would be a very clear downtrend because we create a high, a lower high right here, lower low, lower high, lower low. And then you're going to see, um, and you can kind of see this picture kind of matches with what I drew, drew. It's not like perfect. Like we're not getting perfect every time, but it's, you can, it's visible enough so you can see it. Um, so this would be an uptrend. And this one, the difference between this one is this doesn't really have a lot of ton of obvious low. Like there's no big, big dip in the market. There's just like these mini little dips right here. So this one doesn't really have any obvious lows. It has like these semi-obvious ones, but not really uh, big ones. Like this would be a much more obvious one. So this is a higher low than what this is. So I'd consider like this an uptrend because again, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher low higher low, higher high, and then the trend breaks, the trend breaks here at this last higher low. And I, and I really like looking for the obvious, like the obvious lows and highs. And like, to me, this is super, super obvious. So um, that's actually how to identify like a shift in trend. So now let me go back to the first picture. So we see an uptrend, we see a downtrend right here, but how do you identify a break in the trend? Well, this is where it can get a little complicated, okay? And, and I'll show you why. It all has to do with time frames. A lot of people get confused about time frames for uh, this kind of method. But a break in a trend is going to look like this. So where we 
obviously create a higher low, higher low, and then something like this. But a lot of people wonder, they're like, how do you know, like, like what if this is not a break in the trend, right? Because maybe there's like a, maybe there's a high, higher low here and a higher low here, but then this is a higher low here. So would this be really breaking the trend? Well, let me tell you something. You might have to watch this a few times, but this trend, this, this might, so this might be a trend break for like the one minute time frame. Like it might be like a short term, like, okay, I can look for one minute towards here, but this might be like a five minute time frame pivot and only the one minute pivot broke. So I would consider this, this, this pivot right here, not a trend break on the five. So it might be like a short term, like thing where you could short it on like the one, like it, on the one minute time frame here. But if this is like a five minute pivot, it's truly not downtrending on the five minute yet. So let me go to a candlestick chart because you need to know candlesticks. And, and, and this is where you're going to have to train your, it took me a lot of time to train my eyes to read a candlestick chart and not read a line chart. Um, but you can still generally see like the same really obvious highs and lows. So like what I, let me zoom in. Would you consider this really obvious? No, because it's very not visible. This is like an obvious, obvious low I'd consider. So I would consider this the last higher low. Um, same thing with this one. Like I would consider this obvious, so I'd consider this the last higher low. So in this example, we can see this was an uptrend because it generally outlines kind of what I drew. Okay, so this would be an uptrend because we're creating higher lows and higher highs. Now, once this last really, and keep in mind, obvious, okay, this is obvious, last higher low gets broken here, that's when I'd consider a sudden downtrend. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's where it gets tricky. It might only be a downtrend on the 15-minute time frame because this is the 15-minute low. But if we go to the hourly, look at the hourly. Would it consider be a, would it, this can be would this be considered a downtrend here? And the the answer here is actually yes because this is still very visible and it's still a swing low, right? If you don't know what a swing low and swing high is, I'll go over that in a second. But um, this is still a swing low, and it's still visible in the hourly. Again, all a swing low and swing high is is when we get a three candle formation. So this. This would not be a swing low because see how we get low, lower low, and then even lower low. A swing low has to be a low, lower low, and then a higher low. So it has to have a three candle formation. So I could literally just Google this. Um, and again, this is just another thing you can easily Google without my assistance. Um, but if I did just go to images, it'll uh, tell you. So. Again, this is a swing high because it has a lower high, higher high, and then lower high. And then this is swing low because it has a lower low, swing low, and higher low. Um, again, a lot of people, they they don't understand that like something like, um, like this. This is not a swing low because it's not, there's no higher low right before it. There's a lower low before it. So it needs to have like this, this V-shaped kind of formation where it's a low, lower low, higher low. And then the, the candle in between would be the swing low. So on the hourly, um, it actually would still be considered a market structure shift. Now, what about the four hour? No, it would not be because is this a, is this a higher low in the four hour? No, it's not. It's not even a swing low in the four hour. I would say market structure breaks in the four hour if we like, I would honestly say if we broke like this, like with a lot of displacement, um, I mean, I guess you could say this, but this is this is where the ICT knowledge comes into play, which I haven't taught you guys yet. This is where if we break this, there's just a bunch of, like, some of you guys might know this is a demand zone, but it, these are a bunch of fair reality gaps that would come into play here. So I would not consider, I would consider the market structure shift in four hour if we broke below this low. Um, so if we went like this, I'd consider us in like a true downtrend. But you can see how like the different time frames might not be a market structure shift in a higher time frame. So although the hourly chart um, would technically be a market structure shift right here because this is a higher low and this is getting broken, this is only going to serve as a short to the hourly lows. So this would be an hourly low and then this would be an hourly low right here. 
It's not like you're going to hold down to a four hour low way down here based off an hourly. I mean, if you get really, really good at trading, people do that, but that you, that's like years down the road. Um, anyways, an hourly market structure shift is only going to target an hourly low. Okay. So what some people try to do is they try to say, Oh, I think this is going to be an hourly shift. I'm going to try to catch a five minute shift instead. And they try to get in like way earlier, like up here instead of waiting for a big shift down here and getting it down here. So you can see there is a five minute shift here as well. So we got a uptrend here. We got a higher low, higher low, higher low. And then we break this. Okay. So we break this and we get a five minute shift. But again, if you don't have that picture of what the higher time frame should look like, you're not going to hold down to this hourly low. You're just going to hold down to like this five minute low right here. Because again, a five minute market structure shift should tell us that we should go to a five hour, five minute low. Right now, do you know if the hourly is going to break structure here? No, but you could try to anticipate it and be like, Oh, I think the hourly is also going to dump. So you could hold it longer. But, um, uh, as a beginner, what I'd do is if you're taking an hourly shift, I target an hourly low. If you're taking like a five minute shift, such as here, I would be targeting a five minute low. Don't overcomplicate it. Now, if you go and, and come back to this video in two years, you're going to be like, this guy's a noob. What was he thinking? And, and I'm not a noob. I'm just teaching you as a beginner what you should be doing. But in the future, obviously, like I would hold maybe longer than this. It just it depends on where your trading style is. I'm more of a scalper slash less I sometimes hold to like 100 points but I mainly scalp like 10 to 50 point plays um but just remember if you're taking a five minute shift I would begin with just targeting the five minute low or whatever's obvious okay sometimes there might not be an obvious low like right here so if there's not an obvious low just target like a certain RR so like maybe uh one R or two R it does it just depends um, I'll be going over the RR and how risk management works and, and stuff in the next video. But um, I think it's important to identify market trends. And you, you've all seen a graph before. And if I just literally just type in uptrend, I mean, you've all seen what a uptrend looks like. Like higher low, higher low, higher high, higher high. And um, even, even here, there's sideways trend. It's just important to recognize the trend you're in because... The one mistake I see with a lot of people is they will I don't some of you guys might not know what runners mean yet, but runners is basically when you get into a position of like 10 contracts and you basically sell all but one, that last contract would be considered a runner. So, what does that mean? That means that um if you are let's say you take a long here, okay? Let's say you take a long down here. Let's say you catch this bottom and you take a long. The main issue I see with people is they'll try to hold a runner when the when the higher time frame is in a downtrend. So here you can see we're clearly in a downtrend, right? And some people, they'll catch this long. And this is a good long. Like I take these longs all the time. But they try to, they're like, oh, I think we're going to go back to hit the high. But in reality, they don't know. They like... They're not following the order flow. And by order flow, I mean like trend. And it's not smart to hold runners if you're going against a trend. Now, I didn't say it's not smart to go against a trend. I go against a trend all the time. Um, but you have to you have to realize you should not be holding runners in a downtrend. So um, if I just draw this, okay, if we go back to this example. If I if I shorted this high because I'm like, oh, I think this is bearish. I think there's like a, a zone up here. I think we're going to reject or whatever. If I'm shorting this high, but I know we have not broken the hourly pivot or whatever, would it be smart to hold runners past this low? Probably not, right? Because I know the higher time frame bounced here, and this is only short-term low, and it's just kind of like, okay, I, I know we're going to go to here because we rejected this, but I'm not sure about here because I'm basically gambling that structure is going to continue to break in the higher time frame. So in this situation, this would not be smart to hold a runner. Now let's say caught along right here maybe because I'm like, oh, we bounced here, whatever. Maybe there's a fair value gap there and we bounced. 
um, I would be like, well, because the hourly pivot has not broken, I would hold a runner here because the hourly is still technically in an uptrend. So same thing with, with here. It's like here, the hourly pivot was right here, and this already broke a long time ago. So unless there's like equal highs or something above here, there's no point in holding a runner here, okay? Because the hourly pivot broke, you're just gambling at that point. You want to get out early if you're going against a trend, and that's how it should be. So this has been a little lesson on market trends. Again, you could watch so many YouTube videos on this. It's all the same thing. Um, again, just identifying structure is so, so important. Um, and another thing, like people say like, oh, how do you know if it's going to be an uptrend or downtrend? Sometimes you just have to let, let price play out how it wants to play out. Like, for example, going into this week, I mean, I'm just kind of, kind of watch to see like right now we kind of swept these two lows, right? Which means we sw swept some stop losses, which I'm going to go over in a very future video. But right now I'm just going to kind of monitor this high and monitor this low. And I'm just going to kind of see which way we break because other than that, we don't really have any good structure here in the hourly. So if we really heavily displace over this, I'll be bullish. And if we really heavily heavily displace below this, I'll kind of watch the reaction. Um, I'm, I would be more confident being bullish here because we're pretty low. But um, same thing. So like right now, the 15 minute, as you can see, you made a low, lower low, and then it kind of made it made a lower high, another lower high, and we finally just broke that lower high. So like right now, I consider this trend bullish because we broke that last lower high. And again, I always tell people it doesn't really matter because I don't trade right now. And it's currently 1147 at night and I go to bed. But this would be an example of like a trend break where we dumped so much, but now the 15 minute broke the trend. Now, does that mean the hourly is going to break the trend? Does that mean we're going to go like this? No, like we have to wait to see if we're going to really break this. But this would maybe be a target for this 15-minute trend break. Are we going to gamble and hold over this? No, because we're not trading based off the hourly. We're trading based off the 15-minute getting in down here, and we're targeting the high where, yeah, we could break the trend on the hourly, but we don't care because we're just trading off the 15-minute time frame. So you might have to watch this video a couple times. I, I bet you if you watch this video and then get some more, and, and maybe watch some more videos on YouTube about this, and then come back to this video in a month. What I'm saying is going to make complete sense. But some of you might not make sense for now. Um, but I just simplified it as much as I could. And again, it took me a few videos of watching this stuff to get to get it down. So that's it for right now. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. And again, market structure and market trends are pretty straightforward. I think they should be the first thing you should use and get a, in, in practice. And... I'll, I may make a more advanced video about market trends um, at some point, but uh, this is a beginner course, so uh, this is just going to be the free version for now.